So we talked a lot about how Delta Lake solves a lot of this complexity around managing data and how Delta Engine improves the performances of all your analytics workloads. But once you have all the data, there's only a handful of analysts who have the tools to make sense of it in an organization. Zooming out, data teams are a small part of the equation. In most organizations, we have organizations like marketing, HR, finance. They don't want to use Python or SQL or Scala. Today, to consume data, the rest of the organization has to really jump through lots of hoops. If we want data teams to truly unite, we have to make it easier to consume that data for the rest of the folks in these organizations. Recently, a really fascinating open source project has emerged that's starting to solve these problems. Redash is an easy to use open source dashboarding and visualization service for data scientists and SQL analysts. With it, data teams are better able to democratize sharing data across and within organizations. The community behind this project is absolutely amazing. This project started in 2013, just like Databricks. They have over 300 open source contributors, and they're really passionate about democratizing access to data across organizations. And it's working in a really, really big way. Every day, millions of users and thousands of organizations around the world are using Redash to get insights and make data-driven decisions. They've seen a ton of success, over 7,000 deployments around the world, and the engineering team standing behind this great project is absolutely fantastic. And they've built something great that aligns completely with the Databricks values. So it's my great pleasure to announce today that Redash has joined Databricks. And we're super excited to align these two open source communities, the Spark community with the Redash community. To tell us more about how this will work, it is my great pleasure to introduce Arik Fremovich, the founder of Redash. Arik? Thank you, Ali. I'm really excited to be joining both Databricks and the larger open source community of Spark. Seven years ago, I started Redash as a hackathon project, and I didn't expect to be here today sharing the story with such a large community. Back then, we just moved our data into Data Lake, and we needed somehow to, to use the data, so we tried some SQL Workbench tool, and this was really missing collaboration. We realized that what we need is some web application where we can type in the query, get the results, visualize, and share them. And I decided to give it a try at that hackathon, and that's what started Redash. Working with Databricks earlier this year, I realized how much alignment we have on a lot of these core ideas that I had when I started the project. Um, make it easy to collaborate with others around the data and democratize data for all the teams. But it, beyond the product and vision alignment, it's the amazing culture at Databricks that really makes me and the team excited about joining Databricks. Now, let's talk a bit about what Redash actually is. So, Redash gives you a SQL interface to query your database in its natural syntax, but we give you some tools to make it easier, like the schema browser, autocomplete, and query snippets. Now, once you have the data that you queried, you can visualize it with wide variety of visualizations, and then group these visualizations into dashboards. You can also set up refresh schedule so that you get the most fresh data without waiting. Um, and when it comes to databases, Redash has you covered. So Redash supports about 40, over 40 types of databases, data warehouses, data lakes, and different types of APIs. So it's likely that whatever data source your organization uses, you can connect it to Redash. Now, let's check out how you can use Redash with Databricks. Let's say that I'm a data analyst in a SaaS company, and I'm looking to help the business understand revenues, usage, and how to drive conversions better and reduce churn. Um, we have at least three types of data, account data, payments data, and usage data. But this data is coming from three different sources. A accounts data is in the operational database, payments is with the payments processor, and only usage data is in our data lake. For many meaningful analysis of the data, we will need to join the data from all three sources. We can do this join in Redash, but this has limits and performance issues. What we really want is a single source with all the data. And this is exactly what we can achieve with the Delta Lake. Now, all of our data is in a single location, and we can easily use the data together to create more meaningful insights and have the most fresh data. And now, with that intro, let's check out 
the actual demo. Right, so here we have the Redash query screen. And let me type in a query to just show you a bit how it works. Um, so I have the autocomplete helping me a bit here. Um, although it doesn't save me from typos. Now, here on the left, we have the, the schema browser that shows us the tables and their columns. Now, we got the data back. Um, we, we can look at it, but it's much nicer to look at the visualization. It's easier to understand this way. So let's create one real quick. So here we see the trend of our monthly recurring revenue over time. And we can see that it's growing, but we don't know why or how it's growing. So it probably makes sense to see a breakdown of what's contributing for it. So let's create a, a bit more complex query this time. So this one is a bit long, so I'm using query snippet for it. Now, a query snippet is a very simple construct. You have this keyword that triggers it, and you have a definition of what the snippet will be. And then when you trigger it, it gets inserted into your query. Um, I got the query back, and this time I have much more information. But again, a, a visualization can really help understand it. So here's a breakdown of our monthly recurring revenue. And we can see that most of the time it's growing due to new monthly recurring revenue, but we had some successful campaigns around expansion um, in a few months. And we have some regular expansion over time. And unfortunately, we also have some churn over time. Now, from the same set of data, I can create some other visualizations. Like again, the growth of monthly recurring revenue over time, um, some counters, and the average revenue per user over time. Next, um, once we have, we, we sometimes would like to look at this data um, at a daily level. So here we have another visualization that's showing us the rolling uh, window of 30 days of the monthly recurring revenue at that day. And that's useful when we want to track it in more real time fashion. For example, when we're running some campaign or we are aware of some issue that we want to track more closely. Um, once we have um, a few of these visualizations, we would like to create a dashboard. Um, in these dashboards, we see different facets of our monthly recurring revenue, um, like this breakdown that we saw before, the growth over time, breakdown by different plan types, and breakdown by geography. Now, Looking at the revenues is great, but we also want to help our customer success team to help drive this revenue forward. So here we have a dashboard for our customer success team that shows them two types of accounts. One type is promising trial accounts that basically accounts that are currently in their trial period didn't convert yet, but showing good indication of usage. So we might want to reach out to them and help them um, switch over to a paid account. On the other hand, we have the paid accounts that showing a decline in usage where we would like to um, reach out to them and see if we can help them get back on track. To help the customer success agents, each row here is a link to this other customer insights dashboard. Um, and this dashboard is using a parameter to filter out and show us only this account. Um, here we can see some details about the account, like their usage over time, type of account, the number of widgets they created, and we can definitely see the decline. Um, and we can drill deeper to understand why it might be or just reach out to the customer. Now, this was a really quick taste of Redash. We have a more in-depth session later today that I recommend you checking out. Um, thank you very much.